everybody, happy Monday! How are you? Um, today is a tough day for some people because it's September 11th and, uh, and so we're remembering what has happened years ago and it's a tough one. I remember I was already in the country when that happened and it's one of those things you can talk to anyone and they remember where they were. I mean, I remember where I was and I know exactly how it happened. Uh, we were just glued to the television for days on end. We were still watching TV at that time. Uh, and, and so I wanted to talk about standards and expectations today. And then I was like, wow, it's September 11. How does that connect? So with my spiritual system, you know, if the universe is poking at you, there is a reason for it. So I was like, well, that's going to be a delicate subje subject. But at the same time, I would like to talk about it anyway. The reason why what happened uh, on September 11th impacted individuals to such a deep level, in spite of the fact that it was huge. I mean, it was just buildings coming down. It was just ridiculously, ridiculously visually huge, is that in the US, we didn't expect it to happen. It, it was the type of things that we, we were having such high standards and expectations of safety there's like pff, that's that's just ridiculous to be true it can't be happening because we didn't expect that and something that i work hard on is regulating standards and expectations when i saw what happened on september 11th i looked at it with a european perspective and that's the one of we're dealing with terrorist attacks all the time that's the thing so the, what happened in New York was huge. I mean, it was disproportionately huge. Uh, nothing like that ever happened in Europe since the war. But I looked at it as, hey, wow, we're, yeah, we're being attacked. And, and my French eyes saw and remembered all the terrorist attacks that I grew up on when I was in France. And we had them regularly. We had trains blew up. We had subways with bombs in it. We had all that jazz. So, Yes, it is a delicate subject. At the same time, I do wish to talk about it because I'm in the business of connection. I want people to be able to connect with themselves and, and with others. And when it comes to standards and expectations, depending on where our expectations are, we're setting ourselves up for pain and disappointment and sadness and maybe even depression. It's just not something you have to put yourself to. So the difference between the standards and expectations, you can have really high standards. I encourage you to have extremely high standards, especially uh, for women, because I work a lot with women. Women, please have high standards. Don't take crap from people if you don't want to take crap from them. And when I say crap, it's a judgmental term and it's a very big umbrella. If you feel that you're not treated in a way that you don't enjoy, you don't have to take it. You don't. You can say, I'm not enjoying this. I'm going to walk away. You can have extremely high standards. Actually, the higher, the better. Have the higher standards you can dream of. Have the standards that are the level of dreams, the level of things you would have never dreamed of when you were little, or all the standards that are higher that everybody always told you, you're not big enough for that. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not educated enough. Well, put your standards above that have a higher standard that you think they are so high, it's just ridiculous, you may never get to those, and by gosh, just do it. Just have a higher standards ever. I really encourage you to do that. At the same time, I encourage you to have as low expectations as possible. And the reason for it is that if the expectations are low, you won't be disappointed. So for example, I booked a hotel a few months ago, and it was not going well. <laughs> It was just not an enjoyable experience, just booking it. And then I was talking to my friend about it. And I said, you know what? It's, it's that line of, uh, of hotel. You know, there is only so much you can expect. And his, his response was really quick. It was really funny. It's like, you know, I was telling him you can't go to McDonald's, for example, or junk food, uh, a junk food chain and expect organic vegetables. And he said, no, but even under a fast food chain, they give you a cup when you buy a drink. <laughs> so we can have low expectations, but not so low that we're going to be taken advantage of or um, that we're going to have a really slammy experience. And again, that's a judgment. But, you know, when you just don't feel right. So low expectations so that we don't get disappointed. That's the main thing.
And that can work for relationships, that can work with shopping, that can work with uh, how you spend your time, with networking, that works with everything. Have the highest standards ever, have your dreams so far up high that you may never reach them and that's okay, and at the same time have lower expectations so you don't get disappointed. If I expect everybody I set up an appointment with to be exactly on time. And for the ones who know me, I'm on time. I like things on time. <laughs> I like to be early or it's like on time. And, uh, and for some people on time means 15 minutes later, half an hour later. If the expectations are too high, every time somebody is late by five minutes, you're going to be disappointed, frustrated, annoyed, and you're going to cut off your relationships or potential relationships. That's for clients. That's for friends. Now, if you st set some uh, expectations together, and especially if you communicate that, especially if you communicate your expectations, it's like your standards are your own, you don't have to communicate specifically, but when it comes to expectations, it's like, you know what, what works for me is uh, if people are on time, like that, I can really uh, be on time for my next appointment. And then if you're later than 15 minutes, uh, just let me know. And then we'll figure something out. And if you're later than half an hour, we'll reschedule. Uh, but let me know if you're going to be delayed and, and we'll work something out. So we can also communicate our expectations, even if they are not that high. So we can get the result that we're looking for and we can protect our time. And that's really important. We want to be productive. We want to be happy. And all of that is knowing where our area of tolerance is. So, for example, my area of tolerance for somebody being late is 15 minutes. Like between 0 and 15, if we have an appointment at 10 and, and the person arrives between 10 and 10.15, they are delayed in my book. Now, after 10.15, I don't see anyone, I didn't get a phone call or a text, I pick up the phone, it's like, hey, what's up? And it's like, oh, I'm going to be like 10.30. And it's like, well, that's late. <laughs> And then I will let them know, you know, this is, this is what I was hoping for. Uh, a text would have been helpful because half an hour, that throws my entire schedule for the off. And uh, I would have preferred to just reschedule. So there you go. And, dip, and that's going to really also screen who you have in your life, who you do business with. But at least when somebody is 15 minutes after the time, I'm not frustrated. I'm not agitated. It's like, okay, it's between 10, 10, 15, you know, things happen, especially in Austin, there's traffic and all that jazz. It's really easy <laughs> to be 15 minutes behind in Austin. At the same time, I keep track though, because I have super high standards when it comes to productivity. So if somebody is like, seriously, all the time, 15 minutes behind, I was like, hmm, is that somebody I want in my life? Is that somebody I want to do business with? Is that somebody I want to refer to other people? So low expectations, so we don't get disappointed and agitated, frustrated or angry. High standards, so we can still have that delivery of goods and those values being honored and that reputation because people don't buy your product. People buy who you are. And if you act in a way that shows inconsistency or lack of consideration or sort of a fuzziness, gray area, I'm not sure what this person has in store for me. It may go either way. Is that the type of people you want to spend time with or invest your money in? There you go. So for all the ones of you that are thinking about 9-11, my heart is with you. Uh, it really is. I know it was a tough one for a lot of people in this country and it still has repercussions on a lot of families nowadays. Uh, but for everybody else that is handling it in, in a more leveled way because grieving is a process and we all do it at different rhythm, a different pace. Uh, I think I'm back to you too. And until next week, reach for the greatest version of yourself. You can do it. Bye-bye.